2023 is upon us, and so it's time to look forward to a bunch of new games that are supposed to come out in the next 12 months. I've compiled a list of what seems to be the top 10 most anticipated releases of the year, while of course being somewhat influenced by my own desires. This list is also somewhat based off of hype levels, but don't look too hard into each game's placement. I feel confident that at least 6 of the 10 games mentioned here won't be delayed out of the year, but that is always a factor worth keeping in mind as I learned after 2022's video. Without further ado, let's start with number 10. Starting this list off, we have a little bit of a controversial pick that has players feeling a wide array of emotions from intrigue to disappointment to indifference, and that's Forspoken. Forspoken is an action-adventure, narrative-driven, open-world title, so like every other game that comes out right now. Nothing out of the ordinary here, however, unlike most of those other games within the same mold, Forspoken's combat is centered around various magical abilities. The concept of using magic in combat has been around in games for basically ever, uh, but few of those other games in recent years have been entirely built around exclusively magic. Another which is also on this list. Uh, but the game's not out yet, but there is a free demo available, which I would highly recommend checking out before parting with $70. I've played a little bit of the demo, but I feel I need to spend more time in it to decide if I'm going to pick it up. The combat is a bit confusing, but feels like it has potential. But the dialogue stood out to me for its 13 year old use of the word Fucking fuck fuck shit I'm starting to think I'm not doing the best job of selling this game to you, so I'm just gonna move on to the next game on the list. Number 9 is Street Fighter 6. I myself am not much of a fighting game guy, but Street Fighter 6 is definitely a big deal, even outside of the fighting game community. With the addition of several new modes and the context of internet accessibility today, there is an avenue where Street Fighter 6 is the most popular entry in the series to date. Also adding to the potential mainstream appeal of this title is some new input options for players unfamiliar with this genre of games button combo logic. Also new to the Street Fighter series, players will be able to create their own fighter with seemingly a wide gamut of options. I'm just excited to see someone make a character resembling Jin from Tekken. That would be a lot of fun. Speaking of Tekken 8, it just barely missed the list. I could have put two fighting games on here, but I didn't. Even though I am someone who has spent more time playing Tekken over the years, Street Fighter 6 seems to be the more anticipated title, at least in the US. Are you big into fighting games, and if so, what's your favorite? For many, Resident Evil 4 is one of the greatest games of all time, and so a remake was basically inevitable. RE4 Remake looks to capture the feeling and ambience of the original title, but with some modern updates. I think the goal here is to make the game players had in their imagination the very first time they played it in reality. Largely composed to the same team that worked on the Resident Evil 2 remake, it's safe to assume the game is in good hands. Just looking at the trailer here, it's hard not to be impressed by the visual fidelity and creepy vibes. Being someone who missed out on the original title back in the day, I'm curious to see how this game goes about appeasing old players while still being accessible to new players like myself. I'm excited to give Resident Evil 4 Remake a try when it comes out, unless something changes between now and then, players can expect it on March 24th. Also coming out in March, but a week earlier, is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. There are a lot of questions going into Survivor, like who's the guy floating in the tank, how much time has passed, how powerful has Cal become. Unique to this game and Fallen Order before it is the somewhat Souls-inspired combat system within the universe of Star Wars. There is depth to the combat while also offering a genuine challenge. Few games taking place in this universe have actually invested into a fleshed out combat system, at least with lightsabers. Also not seen in many Star Wars games is this level of investment in an original story. It will be interesting to see what new abilities Cal has and how those new abilities will play out against the assortment of new enemies. Star Wars Jedi Survivor looks to be an epic continuation of the prior title's action-packed adventure. Next up is Hogwarts Legacy, which is expected to be just around the corner in February, at least on current gen consoles, with several later releases scattered throughout the year for the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch versions. 
I'm morbidly curious to see how this will run on Switch. If that's your only platform option, I'd be wary of pre-ordering it ahead of time. But honestly, I am cautiously optimistic about this title. The more I've seen of it, the more I'm impressed. Hogwarts looks to be recreated to a T with the developers clearly having passion about the source material. The character customization options seem to allow for a lot of creative options for players to express themselves, which is always a plus in this type of a game. Personally, I'm not a massive Harry Potter fan, but having watched all the movies, I have always thought to myself how perfect this wizard world would lend itself to an open world RPG. Speaking of which, I have a question for you. When playing an RPG like this, are you the type to recreate yourself or do you like to mix it up and create a whole new character within this game world? I'm just kind of curious. Final Fantasy XVI is probably going to be the best game in the series with its epic story and revolutionary gameplay. I'm actually just talking out of my ass here, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I've honestly never played any of the Final Fantasy games. And they're not necessarily the most inviting series to outsiders even though from what I understand every game is its own self-contained thing. But I felt obligated to put it here since a lot of people are excited for it. 7 Part 2 Remake also is expected to come out in 2023, but 16 seems to have a little bit more buzz around it since it's the new shiny story, but again I have no idea what I'm talking about so there's that. I do have Part 1 of the 7 Remake on my Playstation, just waiting to be played and so maybe that's a good game to introduce myself to the series, hopefully at some point during the year. If you have any thoughts or feelings, feel free to give me some advice down below, I'll for sure read it. Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League seems to be a bit of a wild card. It's hard to say for sure what the gameplay is going to be like at this point. I haven't been completely sold on this title, but I'm still interested due to one primary reason, and that is Rocksteady. Being the creators of the Arkham series, Rocksteady has shown they understand the source material, what makes combat fun, and how to write a compelling story. They've done all three of these things multiple times across multiple titles, and so I have faith in them. This doesn't guarantee the quality of the game, but I'd be lying if I said that this being Kevin Conroy's last role as Batman wasn't a little bit of a sentimental uh, factor for me. Interestingly though, it sounds like the game does take place within the Arkhamverse, which brings up more questions than answers, at least in context to the conclusion of Arkham Knight. Honestly, my main concern about this title is its time and development. Sometimes games that take forever to be made come out as gems due to the high standards of the studio accepting nothing less than great, but other times this can be a bit of a red flag for a project that is too far gone. Hopefully it's the former of the two. Number 3 is Starfield, and honestly I can't seem to gauge where the excitement levels are for this game. It's Bethesda and Todd Howard, so that could be a good thing or a detraction for some players depending on how you look at it. A more grounded universe in space doesn't appeal to me as much as a fantasy land like Tamriel, but considering it's the first non-Elder Scroll or Fallout game in like forever, I'm excited to see what the studio does. Xbox has clearly pegged this as their flagship title of the year, so I think at least a basic level of quality will be met. The gameplay doesn't look to be great, but honestly, that's never really been Bethesda's strength, so I'm not sure why people are that surprised. Todd Howard and company are not known for making amazing reactive gameplay or state-of-the-art graphics, but what they've always done really well is world building and open-ended immersive storytelling. So going in with those expectations sorted out, I'm super hyped to visit this new universe built by Todd Howard's team at Bethesda. I don't know about you, but I am super excited to revisit New York City as both Spider-Men. I'm curious to see how Insomniac will approach playing as both Peter Parker and Miles Morales. In Spider-Man Miles Morales, the developers did a great job of showing that they're listening to the players about what they liked and disliked about the first game, making subtle improvements. Watch as I say this, they're going to have double the MJ missions. Uh, but I do think Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be extremely polished from its story to web swinging to new gadgets and combat abilities. What suits are they going to be adding this time around and how will the symbiote suit be implemented? Will Peter and Miles end up temporarily on the opposite sides of the conflict? To me, probably the most impressive thing about 2018 Spider-Man is that Insomniac gets it. 
They were able to lay down the groundwork for their version of Spider-Man that struck a great balance of being faithful to the characters without retelling an old story. With so little information and so much potential, I think the only safe bet here is that Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be amazing. How do you see our beloved Spider-Man being challenged by Venom and Kraven the Hunter? The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is easily the most anticipated game of 2023 for the general gaming public, with Breath of the Wild constantly popping up on greatest of all time list and The Legend of Zelda being as beloved as it is, there was never another option for the top spot here. Players can't wait to see how Nintendo adds to Link's iconic revolutionary toolset, as well as what they're going to do with Traversal. I've personally never been as attached to this franchise as many other players, preferring the straightforward nature of Mario, but I have recently started playing Breath of the Wild for the first-ish time. I dipped my toes once before, but dropped off fairly quickly after getting stuck and just not being far enough to care or invested enough. Fast forward to today and I'm still a long ways from finishing the game, but I'm genuinely having some fun making my own discoveries along the journey. All this is to say I am becoming a fan that is definitely looking forward to picking up Tears of the Kingdom in 2023. So those were 10 games supposedly coming out in 2023. I'm going to predict now that two of the 10 will be delayed out of the year, but even then there's still a lot to look forward to. Also there does seem to be a nice variety of different types of games, so let me know what you're excited for. Personally my number one is Marvel Spider-Man 2, where kind of like God of War Ragnarok this year. I feel quite confident in the level of quality and so I'm allowing myself to have some high expectations. But thank you for watching and until next time, see ya!